Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, you know that. I know that, I'm just a lady with a bulldog camera and too many opinions. As a mother of bulldogs, I know that one, you're gonna hear him harumphing, snoring, doing all those things. He's, he's a menace to society and to my life and also my best friend and my favorite third co-parent. However, we should do like a little bit of a content warning, I guess, for this video because we're talking about Brittany Dawn and how she really just should like never own any animal or like have kids in my opinion. <laughs> Yikes. So if you're not familiar with who Brittany Dawn is, she, or Brittany Dawn Nelson, Brittany Davis Dawn Nelson, I think that's all the last names she's had. She is a piece of garbage, but also an influencer from Texas. Now, she started out as a fitness influencer, which if you saw her form when she was doing squats, you'd be like, how and why and also how dare you? But she was sued by the state of Texas for defrauding people of like millions of dollars and just being a scammer in general. Now, she has changed from that type of grift over to like the super Christian grift, very homophobic, very misogynistic, very, and obviously those are all my own opinion, homophobic, transphobic. I get a little bit of a racist from her too, but you know, she's just a delight. Don't get me started on her husband. This man literally like cosplays as a like member of the SWAT team. And that's embarrassing. As someone who's married to someone who like literally is on the SWAT team, it's embarrassing. So Brittany Dawn has had many eras and has continued to scam in my opinion over the years. And one like saga or aspect of her online life and career online that really just is insane is how many pets she has had. And there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of pets. As long as you are able to care for all of them and you're not just using them as accessories and just for attention, which in my opinion, that's what she does. So let's go over truly a horrific timeline of Brittany Dawn and her pets. If you would like to watch a deep dive on Brittany Dawn, I have a deep dive on her. I will have it up in the corner and it will be linked down below too. Also, yes, it is nighttime and that's why I like don't really have makeup on because I'm not trying to put on makeup and then just take it off to go to sleep because it's like 8 p.m. right now. I just put my son to bed and now I have to work. And since this is a pretty sad topic, especially if you are, you know, someone like me who loves animals so much and loves dogs especially, and is a dog mom too, that's my firstborn, this might be a heavier video for you. So, I mean, hey, listen, if, if you gotta, if you gotta skip it, that's all right, but I will have a little palette refresher for you, a little reward for you at the end. I'm gonna make a little compilation of Wiggum being just the best crazy boy ever. Hi friends, so y'all know that lately the little one has been teething and unfortunately, recently, for whatever reason, whenever I try to transfer him to his crib, he says, hey, absolutely not, that's not happening. So sometimes the only way I can get him to nap is contact naps. And that means that I'm trapped under him for an hour to two hours. And it is, not gonna lie, kind of my favorite because it's kind of also my me time. Not only am I getting snuggles, but the sponsor of this video has helped me just add to that little escape. So while my son is sleeping on me, I'm getting all those sweaty, sweet snuggles. Love and Pies is keeping me sane. Love and Pies is a mobile game that everyone has been talking about, and it is so easy to pick up and play and sometimes hard for me to put down. <laughs> Not only does it help me pass the time while I'm trapped under my sweaty baby, but also while I'm in waiting rooms, doctor's offices, waiting for my target pickup, just helps me pass the time all that much easier. Typically, I'm not a huge fan of the storylines in these games. However, I found myself like skipping through it for the first few days, cause there's like different days. I'm on day 20. I was about to skip through something and I was like, wait a minute, am I in a love triangle? Where's my mom's cat? Did someone steal it? Who's, the, who's this purple fox thing person? It's like a thief. Listen, I'm hot on the case and I love it. So scan the QR code on the screen, Use the link in my bio. Love and Pies is free to download and it doesn't force you to watch any ads or anything like that, which is awesome. Download Love and Pies. Like I said, it's free to download. And let me know in the comments below. One, what do you name your dog? I named mine Bean, obviously. And then two, let me know what day you're on. Yeah, like what level, what day are you on? Also, what's up with Yuka? Is she our friend or not? Cause she's a little, I don't trust her. I don't trust anyone here. I don't trust anyone in this game, except for Joe. Thank you Love and Pies for sponsoring this video. And now back to the video. Also, you'll see that as 
the years go by, I say this with peace and love. I say this as a very white woman from the mountains of caucus who does enjoy a good self tan. You're going to notice that Brittany Dawn just gets more and more brown over the years to the point where she's like, I'm not, I'm not even joking. She's, she's gray now. She looks like a dirty, fake Louis Vuitton purse. I mean, go off, I guess, but it's just like, is that, is that the aesthetic you're going for? All right. So we have two timelines here made by people on Reddit and they are truly, truly crazy. So we have one that's more so just like paragraph form. And then we have this one that is a timeline. So we have here her dog that she got in 2014 that, or rather that she got a long time ago, apparently was her first dog, Coco. And I think she got her in 2012. She was an elderly dachshund and she got rid of her in 2022. Seems to have been her first dog. Thankfully, she is alive and safe. And then on this updated little timeline that we have, it says that she ditched her at her parents' ranch, I guess. Like now she's just at her parents' house. So this one was rehomed and she has a little sideways tongue. She's so cute. And it says that she was last seen in 2022. And then in 2014, we have Kita the Husky. All these names, stop it. I mean, my dog's name's Wiggum, named after Chief Wiggum from The Simpsons but seem to be around for a year or two before just disappearing. Some recall that she had sent Kita to training, but then it never, she never came back, I guess. And so this one was a Christmas present from her last boyfriend or last husband, whoever she was with. On this other one, it says that Kita, another dog, Ranger, and another dog, Harlow, Jesus, she got one in 2014, one in 2013, and one in 2018. Kita and Ranger, thankfully, they went with Zach after he and Brittany divorced in 2017. And then Harlow, who was, it looks like a German shepherd, Brittany and her ex-boyfriend, ex-best friend. Supposedly, Nico helped Harlow after the breakup. Nico is an army veteran, police officer, and allegedly canine trainer, which is ironic because that's everything that her husband now likes to cosplay as. So weird. It's so, it is so, so cringe to have all this like tactical stuff and have that be like your aesthetic. Like you're not in the military. You're not a first responder. It's really embarrassing, but you know what? That's okay. In 2019, she got uh, Nico, the dog, who it's weird, it's weird that she got a dog and then named it an ex-boyfriend she had. So she got a pit bull, beautiful blue looking pit bull, and he's just so, so cute. And that's Nico the pit bull, not to be confused with the human ex-boyfriend. That's why on a lot of the Reddit threads and stuff, it'll say the human ex-boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend human Nico, you know, so you don't get confused and be like, she was dating a dog. What happened? I mean, she's kind of dating one now. And that was in 2018. And this is the one that was just recently found like two weeks ago. And it's truly crazy. So we're going to come back to that one in a second. So she got him in 2018. She got him when he was a puppy. And then she decided that they weren't vibing due to his high energy, I guess. And she was saying that, that she was like, I have a lot of anxiety and he has a lot of energy and doesn't work out. And like, there's things that have happened, but like nothing bad. Don't worry. And she actually, this was the only time that she had even mentioned him, which is really crazy because apparently he had been at a, like boarded at like a trainer's, like in a training program. You don't send your dog to a training program for like five months. And like, that's how long he was there. That's insane. And it's truly crazy that one of the reasons she says that she had to rehome him was because, which plot twist. There we go. Spoiler. She rehomes him. Kind of. She said that she had to do that because he had so much energy and like she couldn't devote like that time to him. You don't have a real job. You're an influencer. I am also that, but like, what do you mean? It just seems like she doesn't do any research about these dogs or these pets prior to getting them. Like bully breeds are some of the most abandoned dogs. Like they're so cute when they're little and then they become a lot of work. And I mean, like Wiggum has so much energy. Yeah, y'all hear him snoring constantly, but he does have a lot of energy. They do take a lot of work. There's a lot of wrinkles and folds and anal glands you got to express and stuff. So like it's truly wild. Training place for several months, ultimately telling the trainer she could not take him back, which is so messed up. She was not allowed to just leave him there. So in 2019, a rescue agency, The Love Pit, tried to help Brittany rehome him. She ghosted them days later a couple that Brittany found on Craigslist showed up at the training center and took him. After 24 hours, the couple contacted the trainer asking to give him back. It's so messed up. The trainer gave the couple's information to Brittany Dawn. Presumably, Brittany ghosted them as well since she never took Nico back. 
how messed up is that? Okay, we're going to skip the rest of that and we're going to go to, we're going to continue in the timeline. All right. And then we have in August of 2019, she has Brody and he is a doodle of some kind, I assume, or like a teddy bear dog. I think she's, I think she's a doodle. He, whoever, whatever. And people were commenting on the post saying that she got another dog and they said another puppy which really is truly crazy because it's like not even a few months after you just like left your dog somewhere whatever these things are just accessories to her it's so wild so it says another puppy what happens if this one is hyper or needs a yard i'm sorry but i'm so sick of so many people getting puppies and then realizing that when they're older they're too hard to handle and they don't have the time or energy to put into them aka put into their dog aka a family member if you're not willing to put work in and have the proper yard and time to work with the dog, then don't get a big dog. Golden Doodles, which is what Brody was, can be very hyper and need exercise and commitment from their family. Rescue a dog that you know the temperament of if you're not willing to make the commitment, blah, 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 blah. And someone said, yeah, where'd the Husky go? That went off to the training academy and they're referring to Keto, who is with the ex-boyfriend because Brittany can't take care of anything. I don't know how adoption agencies or foster agencies are like giving this woman babies. I mean, maybe that's like kind of what best for her because if she, she didn't just give them back, you know? When, she, when she's over it, I guess you get to play pretend mommy. That what I just said only applies to her. That doesn't apply to all foster moms. Fostering is literally the wor- the Lord's work. And I am very impressed with you. I praise you for that. I would get way too attached and would not be able to do that. If you're a foster mom, you're amazing. Or foster dad, foster family, whatever. If you're good at it, I don't know. You could be horrible. Anyways, so, and then it says at one point in Brody's short life through the neglect of his grooming needs, he suffered a skin condition and this caused a permanent large black patch of discoloration on his back where his skin had been infected. This is not something that a vet tech would allow to happen to her dog. Uh, That certain vet's office that she claims that she worked for previously, they have since come out and said that she did work there as a vet tech. And it's also just super crazy, again, not looking into like what, you know, knowing about the breed. That's like whenever anyone says like, oh, you know, Wiggum's an English bulldog. Oh, like I really want one or like I've always wanted one or like seeing you with him like makes me want one. I always tell them, don't do it. Do not get a bulldog. I have to ex- express his anal glands like twice a month, sometimes once a month, but usually twice a month to clean his nose wrinkles every single day. I clean his ears maybe once a week. I mean, they they are very, very, very high maintenance dogs and they're prone to so many medical issues. He's had two different $6,000 surgeries. So please, for the love of God, don't get an English bulldog. I love him so much and we probably won't have any other type of dog. But but again, if you know anything about doodles, doodle breeds, golden doodles, whatever, like that's that's like the white person dog, I feel like. In South Tampa, everyone has a doodle and you have to stick to their schedule when it comes to grooming. If not, even if they have like a little tiny bit of matting or it looks like it's getting to that or you like skip a week or two when it comes to their grooming schedule, they will have to be completely shaved. Like it's a big deal. Why wouldn't she know that? I know literally everything about bulldogs. Like I do not understand this person. I'm tricking warning. So, so Brittany and her husband went to go run errands and they left Brody outside in their backyard. She says it was like 45 minutes when they went to go run errands. Also, it was in my deep dive that I did on her. I looked up the temperature of that specific area where she lives on that specific day and the time of day that she said it was. It might just because I have a bulldog and he can't be outside for like more than 10 minutes, but I think that was far too hot for her dog to be outside by himself. Also, if you're leaving your house, bring your dog inside. Like it's literally not that hard and you can stay out there long. Oh, well, that's, you know, some dogs just like to be outside. I don't care. It's it's not an outside dog. And it's, I mean, two years old, that's still a puppy. Come on. And she has shown her backyard of that house. I don't know if she's still in that house, but of that house multiple times. And the fencing with that house, easily that little pup could have slipped through when he did. And then also other people have said like one of the like sides of the yard is just completely unfenced. She had previously said that he likes to go adventuring around. So you're leaving your area, your cul-de-sac, whatever, your neighborhood, almost an hour and just letting your dog roam around. Like, what are you doing? So he got hit by a car and he, yeah, he got hit by a car, which is very sad. And apparently he was in such, such bad shape that the vet tech in her decided that it was a good idea for her husband 
to use his firearm to end the dog's suffering. There is a vet's office about not even a three minute drive from where that happened, by the way. But yes, she's a vet tech, don't worry. This woman, awful, awful human being in my opinion. So what happens when one dog dies? You instantly get another one. So there is Remy. She was an early Christmas gift from her husband. Stop getting pets as Christmas gifts and as birthday gifts. Like, does this woman get a dog every year for Christmas? Like, please stop doing that. So Remy was, I don't know what breed it was, but it was just so adorable and little and so cute. And it was rehomed. And it says Christmas gift was allowed to, quote, go adventuring out of the yard when they left home. What? <laughs> Lord. Um, was seen created in the background of Instagram stories and then never spoken of or shown again. Like you're just asking for your dogs to run away. And then it says that someone claims that the dog was rehomed. Once again, this woman is like the queen of rehoming dogs, I swear. All right. And then, oh, Remy, like Remington. Of course she named her dog Remington. Pretty Dog can't even hold a firearm correctly. You have no business naming your dog Remington. And then there was Harley the horse. Poor... Poor, poor Harley. Actually, this was b between Remy and the dog being allegedly accidentally hit by a car. But it was Brittany's car that hit him. That wouldn't surprise me. Brittany left a review on the the like Google review or whatever for the stables where she was having her horse stay, where she was boarding her horse. That's what it's called. Act like I'm a horse girl, okay? And she said, my horse was removed from this facility due to lack of care and malnourishment. I'm thankful that I got him out when I did. I would not recommend McKinney Horse Plex for the well-being of your horse. And the owners were not having it. And they said, dear Brittany, I appreciate all reviews of our facility, even those I might not necessarily agree with. To be clear to the public reading this, your horse Harley was at our facility for seven months during 2018. You were late on board once in in 2019, out of 12 months of board, you were late nine times, requiring multiple calls and text messages for payment. In 2020, you were late five out of five months, and you threatened if I made you pay your final payment, you would write a bad review on Yelp and Google. I think it is important to know that before... The healthy picture of Harley was actually taken after he was at our facility for about a year and taken on one of the maybe five times that you visited the entire time he was boarded with us. And the after pictures were taken after he had been sick for weeks with a draining wound and you would not have the vet out, nor did you come see him yourself. That is so horrible. McKinney Horseplex actually stepped up and paid the vet in advance to get your horse medical care. At this point, you still had not paid your prior year's vet bill. As you were an absent owner, several of us took over Harley, mainly Jennifer and I. We loved Harley and did the best we could, up to including doing all of his care when he was sick, paying the vet bill so he would come come out, etc. Anyone who wants to find out more about Brittany, Harley's owner, needs to do a little Google search. Brittany Dawn Fitness. Best of luck to everyone finding a facility that's the right fit. I love that because F this girl. It really just seems that she just tosses things aside and it's just like, nope, they're okay. And just like, like takes no accountability. Obviously we've seen that, but then more so than that, just like, just throws things away. It's so sad. And I know it's, it's not a nice thing to say, but like, I hope this person never has kids. No, this, like, if you can't even take care of a dog, if you have had to rehome multiple animals, more than five animals, like, stop. Then please don't have children because I was about to say you can't rehome them. I guess you can actually. All right, now we have the current dog or both current dogs, I guess. So there's Oakley, who is again, a doodle. And it says, surprise Christmas present from my husband. Stop. Stop getting this woman dogs, please, for the love of God. And it's strange because he looks just like Brody did, but it's fine. So, you know, again, one dies, you get another one. You hit one with your car and then end up shooting it. Just get another one. It's okay. They're disposable at this point to her. This is a Christmas gift from her <laughs> to fit her beige aesthetic. 
Uh, despite getting a large breed dog, Brittany's fence still appears to be open slash non-existent on one side of her yard. Oakley is rarely shown now. And now Oakley is hardly shown. You can rarely see him like in the back of videos and Instagram stories and stuff, which fine, I guess. But I don't know. I mean, I I still put like y'all hear Wiggum. He comes up and snuggles me. Like I put like I post pictures of him all the time. And some people don't do that, but like she does at some point, but then it just seems like she just like forgets just like she forgets to take care of him, I guess, like the horse, goodness. All right, and then we have Dax. This one's a fun one. <laughs> this one's this one's a real fun one. And so that's March, 2023. So last year she's had him for like a year, I guess. He was possibly a birthday gift for her. Notice the trend, birthday gift and Christmas gifts. And then it <laughs> says, where's tactical stolen valor Amazon Prime outfits to match her husband. Brittany said multiple times that she would not share the dog ever online or share his name. And then like right after that, she shared a picture of him and it had like had his like name on his like tactical vest, which listen, is Wiggum's harness like a tactical looking one? Yes, because I had like a floral looking one and he hated it. And then also my husband kept calling it his brawl. I thought it was adorable. Okay. And then so Tony got him the other one that was like more snug on him and like actually fit him. And you are supposed to wear, use harnesses with bulldogs because of like their breathing and stuff. But yeah, he also has a patch on it that says handsome boy. We'll post a picture right here. The sweetest boy ever. My husband's not cosplaying as a, <laughs> as a cop. He is one, but he's also not a racist piece of shit like her husband. So we've got that going for us. Yeah. So she brags about him all the time saying that she, he is a like personal per protection dog. Yeah. So is Wiggum. She also allows him to run wildly in front of her horse, which I mean, if they're like super comfortable with each other, that's different, but I don't think that they would be after like a year, but I don't know. Just I, I personally wouldn't have my dog in the like corral with me. Then again, I would not starve my horse and ignore it like Brittany Dawn would, but hey. He does display many signs of like not being that and not being trained as such. And I found this very interesting when I was looking this up. Now, Dax is a Belgian Malinois, looks like a German Shepherd, right? I would say they're basically the same thing, but I know there's going to be like dog breed people who are going to be like, they're not the same thing. So most of, most police dogs are Belgian Malinois or at least the at least the ones that that like our sheriff's office gets like literally straight from Germany or wherever the f they get them from pretty sure they actually do get them from there anyways there are some other ones that are german shepherds and they have like basset hounds and stuff which are like real cool love those anyways that's not what this video is about but i loved this post on reddit because it is like very logical and this person really does seem like an expert and i also had asked two of our very good friends who are canine units their dogs are so cute and they have been on that specific squad and paired with their dog one of them has been doing it for five years another one has been doing it for 10 and then another one actually is one of the people who trains them now she used to be and does like the training with all of them and like when you get like in that position and like paired with your dog i guess she's amazing but i asked them as well and they agreed with this post saying that no this there's no way that this dog is a retired police dog. Like, no. And then also just saying, like, it, whatever this post is saying. They basically agree with it is what I'm trying to say. So this one says, hello, snarkers. <laughs> TLDR. I do not think that this dog is trained to bite someone as protection. It's a pet quality dog that by existing adds to Jordan's tactical man brand. And I completely agree with that. And... I read this to my husband and he rolled his eyes. He's like, oh yeah. Okay, so this person says, I have experience uh, with the breed, raising, training, rehoming for about 10 years. My family extended and immediate, basically going over their qualifications to even talk about this and proving that they do have this knowledge. And so they're saying that Dax, the Belgian Malinois that Brittany Dawn now has, average to below average Malinois, not special in any way. No offense to the sweet boy, but it says that he does not appear to be from any well-known or reputable kennel and he's gray. Yes, there are some that are gray. And then also goes on to say when it comes to effective trained personal protection dogs, PPD, not to be confused with a uh, postpartum depression, which, hey, <laughs> Zoloft. Anyways, so they were talking about how he just doesn't show the signs of a dog that is going to be well-trained like that and, you know, be confident and 
all that just from looking at the Instagram stories that they've seen them in. And I'm going to have this on the screen so you can read it if you want. And I'll have this link down below too. But they go further into talking about like the teeth specifically and saying that if this dog had, you know, bite experience or was doing like these types of exercises, and that would be part of the exercises if he was trained as such, his teeth wouldn't look as good as they do basically. Anyways, I thought it was very, very interesting. And Brittany goes on and on and says things like how her dog is like going to kill people. And it's just really embarrassing. Like she posted this one and it says, had a guy pass us on the running trail this morning. And he put his hands up like, we good, we good, when he saw a Belgian Malinois near him. Dax making grown men distance themselves from us means he's doing his job right. I'll take situations that never happened for 500, Alex. Thank you. In 2017, Brittany Dawn posted this tweet that said, really wish people would stop spending $3,000 on dogs when there are homeless dogs at shelters that need to be adopted for like 50 bucks. This you with all your rehomed animals and dogs that you've bought from breeders. And there, I mean, there definitely are like ethical breeders. I got one from a breeder. It's okay. Just don't be a shitty owner. And it's also okay if you don't agree with that. That's fine too. We adopted our last bulldog, Daphne. She was amazing. Leave a dog emoji in the comments below if you remember Daphne, but only if you really do. Don't be crazy. So back to Nico. So no one had heard about him. He was just, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. He got snapped. However, the blip happened and he came back. So here's some pictures of Nico. He looks so adorable. This is in January, 2018 from his own Instagram that is still up. Look at this sweet, sweet little baby. You can tell how big his paws are and he gonna be a big boy, or I mean, he is a big boy now, but he's so cute. And it says, hello, my name is Nico. My flight landed in Dallas today. I came all the way from Georgia to unite with my mom. I'm 10 weeks old and ready to conquer the puppy world. This place, uh, Bevel Dog Behavior, posted these pities and they said pity party which is adorable and so they are a behavior training place right it's pup school obedience school you send your pup there for a month two months whatever and they come back and are hopefully well trained you would think i mean they seem pretty legitimate it was nice of them to keep the dog for that long like it doesn't it doesn't seem like that's normal and so that was at the end of that year and then december 2018 this was the last post of nico on the instagram that britney ran beautiful dog so freaking beautiful 2018 the year i met my forever mama and my forever little sister she got another dog in 2018 she means harlow the dog that went to go live with her ex now it's just interesting that it says the year that i met my forever mama yeah you met her and then you sp you spent like almost the entire year at that behavioral place and then came back and then boom you were rehomed which is awful a week ago i believe this girl michaela who rescues dogs in the texas area that she's in posted this tiktok and we are just going to speed through it a bit it has copyrighted music on it so we are going to silence that and we're going to do it on one and a half speed so it says that she found a starving dog dumped at a construction site. They scanned him for a microchip and it's revealed that the past owner was Brittany Dawn Davis. And Nico was adopted as a super cute little pup in 2018, even had his own Instagram. By November, 2018, Brittany had placed Nico into a board and train program that was supposed to last for four weeks. So he wasn't there all year, but he was there for a long time. And then instead he remained at the training facility for over seven months, which is crazy. By May 2019, Brittany had decided to rehome him. Love Pit Rescue Organization basically reposted the picture from Nico's own Instagram that Brittany ran because he doesn't have thumbs, you know, so we can't post Instagram. Just like Wiggum. If you want to follow Wiggum on Instagram, his thing is uh, Wiggum Gone Wild. It's run by me because he doesn't have thumbs. It says he's up for adoption. She said in a video that she wasn't vibing with him. So after spending months at a dog camp, she finally gave up on him and people are pissed, rightfully so. So that was 2019. She decided to rehome him in May. Brittany reached out to the Love Pit Aboli Rescue for assistance. And then this is an email that the Love Pit organization sent to Michaela, the girl who found him and they said this is awful back in 2019 we tried to help britney with rehoming nico safely 
However, five days after she registered, we saw a post about her finding a home. Rumor has it she rehomed him on Craigslist. I have no idea if that's the truth or not, but something I was told when I started looking into this today. We have an email dating back to May 6, 2019, where we asked her for an update and if he had found a home and she stopped replying to us. Please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help. So that's apparently what happened is that she just found someone on Craigslist and then they went to go pick him up from the behavioral boarding place and then they got him and then tried to return him the next day. And the behavioral place was like, like, you can't just bring him back here. He's not our dog. Like you have to talk to Brittany. So they tried to give that information to those people and she most likely ghosted them too. And then the dog was abandoned, unfortunately. I mean, it says after 24 hours, the Craigslist couple wanted to return him. It's unclear what happened to him after that or exactly how he ended up dumped in this condition four years later. And it is clear that Brittany irresponsibly rehomed him. She did not want to continue paying boarding fees while a rescue tried to rehome him. And he has suffered for years due to her. And this is her response, which I think is absolutely wild. She said, I didn't abandon him. I think it says, I rehomed him to a family. I made a video about this five years ago, but of course the internet is always going to manipulate and distort the truth, always girl doesn't sound like that's what happened. Blonde girl that is in like the best friend group that Brittany Dawn is in. She's standing next to her in this picture wearing fur coats that look like they're made out of uh, genuine Muppet fur. It's the first picture I've ever seen of this girl, Farron, with her mouth closed, like smiling with her mouth not wide open. This woman is terrifying. I need to do a video on just her. Someone said, hey, Farron, can you please ask why your bestie's dog has been rescued and is starving? We're all dying to hear how this is a demonic attack or the internet getting it all wrong because that's what they say constantly. Like when people try to hold them accountable for their actions or even just insinuate something or they get any type of negativity, which realistically a lot of times it's the consequences of their own actions, they will say that it's God trying to attack them. It's a demonic attack. And it's like, no, it's you. You know, nut job. And she said, I will not. Do not believe everything you see on the internet. It's filled with lies. Girl, so is that awful hat. What are you doing? And then of course, the reel goes on to say, you know, that there's, Brittany will continue to adopt, neglect, and, and rehome animals, unfortunately. And unfor- unfortunately, that's true. Um, an update on Nico. I do have the other reel, but I, I'm not going to uh, post that one. But his vet bills apparently were all paid for. They were able to send him over to a very experienced pit bull foster home with like four boxes of stuff. All of his vet bills were paid for things to the GoFundMe. And the vet was like, yeah, he's recovering really well. And they're going to try to have like a mask taken off of his paw or something later on. Other than just like being real skinny, like he's healthy and he's so, like such a little lover boy and so sweet. And it's just really sad that clearly she just neglected him and just didn't want to, to take the time to, I mean, spend time with him. It's, it's truly, truly wild. I mean, me and me and Tony run around with our bulldog all the time and, you know, get his energy out. And especially that we have a, a baby to like try to spend specific time with him. That's why I will rarely ever, you know, be in my office without him. I always want him to feel comfortable in my office and feel loved and not feel like forgotten or anything. I'm about to cry right now. So I think that this is like a great representation. And keep in mind, you can say all day long, well, oh, it, you know, it, it was out of her hands. Like it's actually, it's the people who like they dumped him, whatever, like she didn't dump him, but it's like she, she did more, more than once. Like you're rehoming an animal irresponsibly. Like it's not, people can compare it to who was it? Logan Paul, who had a pig and then had to rehome her because he was moving to Puerto Rico and he couldn't bring his pig to Puerto Rico with him. And so he gave it to a a rescue and the rescue was, you know, good. It wasn't problematic or anything. Apparently I don't know. But then I guess the rescue like went under and like was mismanaged or something. And that was years and years ago. So like, I I don't necessarily think that someone can be like, I don't think that's a hundred percent his fault, but you, you do need to be able to rehome responsibly, especially when you're a public figure. I mean, just in general, yes, but especially when you're a public figure. And then also do research before you get these animals. That comes from someone who had a sugar glider. I had a flying squirrel named Stitch. He's amazing. I, I had I had him for what, like four or five years? And I didn't know I was supposed to get two. 
I was also like 13, but we didn't know that you're supposed to get two. We weren't taught that. Like, yeah, we should have done more research for getting one. And if you don't get two, they can get depressed and then starve themselves and then just die. And that's what happened to Stitch. RIP. That was my dude, man. I loved him. I did have to wear special gloves because um, they bite you. <laughs> but he was so sweet and cuddly. We'd watch Disney movies together. Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. I think it's truly crazy. And I don't think that Brittany Dawn should have any more animals. And I think that she's a garbage human being. Yeah, they should probably stop getting animals that they are not equipped to care for. And then also, I feel like I feel bad saying it because I know she has talked openly about her miscarriages, but then also she's said before, she's like, I think I was pregnant and then didn't even have a positive test and just like had a period. She also likes to cosplay as someone who has had like multiple, multiple miscarriages. I feel bad saying this, but like, I feel like she shouldn't have kids either. So maybe the flying spaghetti monster is like, I saw what you did to those dogs. You ain't having kids. All right. So I am gonna go, but I know this video was awful and I am so happy that I'm sad that this happened to this dog, but I'm happy that he was found because if he wasn't found, the girl, Michaela, who rescued him and please follow her on TikTok. She does amazing work. And I'm so happy that like for the work that she does, it's amazing. So she's great. I love her a lot. I don't even know her, but I love her. But I'm so happy that she found him because if she didn't, she even said like, I don't think he would have survived much longer. And that's very sad. So yeah, stay spicy, snuggle your dog and stay tuned for a little compilation of Wiggum that I will have playing at the end of this video because you know, he's crazy and just the best boy and you deserve it. You deserve a good old Wiggum cam, okay? All right, subscribe, like, and comment, all that stuff. Feel free to leave Wiggum as my lord and savior in the comments below if you've made it this far. Just popping in real quick to remind you to click the link in my description box and scan that QR code and download Love and Pies for free today and join me. Let's have fun. Let's escape together. Thank you again, Love and Pies, for sponsoring this video. And I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watch me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Take my eyes open to force reality